Good day and welcome back to TMAC FPV, your home for your journey to better FPV fun flights and racing stuff. Have you been thinking about building your own micro FPV race drone soon? Wondering what the best flight controller and ESC stack combination is for your build? Well today, we're going to compare two of the most feature packed flight controller and ESC stack combinations that you may want to consider for your build and we'll explain why. Stay tuned. Alright, the comparison that we're going to be doing today is going to be between the Diatone Mamba F4 Mini Power Tower and the Airbot Omnibus F4 Nano V6 and the Ori 32 ESC associated with it. But before we get into the comparisons, I mentioned previously that we're going to explain why these are two of the stacks that you may want to consider in your micro FPV drone build. In order to do that, uh, I'm going to uh, explain why I have the features that I do have in the left hand column in my priority order from top to bottom. I'm not going to explain each one of these features uh, because some of them are self-explanatory such as the uh, 20 by 20 mount, cost, things of that nature, but some of the ones that are not necessarily self-evident uh, we'll take a look at in more detail. The first of those is going to be, why am I interested in an MPU-6000? Well, the reason is because the MPU-6000 is less susceptible to noise, which means it's going to be easier to tune. And I'm speaking from experience on this because I've had a flight controller on a uh, binded flight quad that I purchased from a reputable company uh, earlier this year that didn't have an MPU-6000 and it was very sensitive to uh, noise and therefore it was very difficult to tune and it took me quite some time to get it to the point where it was flyable and actually I ended up replacing that flight controller on almost a brand new quad uh, with one that had an MPU 6000 on it and I've never had a problem since. Based on that type of experience it's very important for me to have a flight controller with an MPU-6000. The next feature that I wanted to go over was uh, Betaflight OSD. Uh, and why is that important? Because it overlays flight data in, in your goggles, such as your battery voltage, your flight time, and things of that nature, such, so that you can actually monitor those things by looking in your goggle at the screen. Uh, and with that Betaflight OSD, you can also change some of the parameters. The next feature is solder pads and no pins. Some flight controller stacks between the flight controller and the ESC and sometimes between the flight controller and the VTX have are connected instead of via solder pads and wires they're connected via pins and my experience with those types of stacks has not been good but for me it's important to have solder pads and no pins. The next feature is black box. What is black box? Basically it's your flight data recorder uh, and with that capability the data can be displayed visually for use in tuning. The black box capability, and not all flight controllers have that, especially in the micro size, is a fallback for you in case your quadcopter is not performing properly due to the PID values and you're having difficulty tuning it. You can actually go into Black Box uh, Explorer and take a look at the flight data visually and then use that to better tune your quad. Smart Audio is a TBS developed protocol for your on-screen display to your video transmitter communication and with that capability you're able to change your video transmitter power and frequencies through your transmitter uh, by looking through your goggles remotely instead of having to find the little button on the video transmitter and take a look at the LEDs and long press and short press and things of that nature. It's just a heck of a lot easier using uh, Smart Audio. Smart Port Telemetry is a two-way link between your quad's receiver and your radio controller or your transmitter. And with this capability, your quadcopter relays the sensor data to the transmitter, which allows for audible warnings in addition to that which you might have via your OSD visuals. I really like this capability because when I'm flying, I don't want to be looking, turning my eyes to the bottom right corner of my screen to see how much battery voltage I have left or what my RSSI value is in the upper right hand corner. 
uh, instead I can get an audible warning uh, from that, such as this. Signal low. Telemetry lost. And the last feature which we'll go over in some detail is with your ESC, is it running BL Heli S or BL Heli 32 firmware? Uh, the difference being BL Heli 32 is the next generation after BL Heli S and supposedly it allows for faster protocols and less latency, i.e. higher performance. Uh, but one of the main things that you get out of BL Heli 32 is the capability for ESC telemetry, which you can get uh, your current, uh, your motor RPMs, and things of that nature, which is good flight data to be able to capture. You're able to get that with BL Heli 32. One nice feature in addition to that uh, is that you can actually program your BL Heli 32 ESCs to play notes of songs, if you will, uh, whereas with BL Heli S you're not capable of doing that. Here's an example of that. So based on those features, here's the comparison between the Diatone Mamba F4 Mini Power Tower and the Airbot Omnibus F4 Nano V6 and the Ori 32. These are the only two stacks that I've been able to come across for a micro FPV quadcopter build that have all of these features. There are some flight controller stacks which have the majority of these. Some even have all of them except one and you would have to make a compromise. Uh, for instance, uh, there may be a stack out there that has the capability to support LEDs. However, if you want to do smart audio, then you're actually going to have to use the LED pads for smart audio, which means then you wouldn't be able to have LED support. So there are other stacks out there that have a lot of these features. These are the only two stacks for micro FPV quadcopters that i found that actually have them all. So I'm just going to go over the differences between the Diatone Mamba F4 uh, stack and the Airbot Omnibus F4 stack. They're both obviously 20 by 20 mounts. Here's the size and weight of each of them. The Airbot uh, is going to be coming in at a greater weight, almost 8 grams difference. And we'll go ahead and take now and take a look at the actual size and weight by using uh, digital calipers. Another difference between the Daytona Mamba F4 stack and the Airbot Omnibus F4 stack is the Airbot stack flight controller is rated for up to 6S. Now the ESC, this Ori 32 ESC, is only rated up to 4S via the documentation. But I've got an asterisk here because based on my contact and inquiry with Airbot, what they're telling me is it's rated for 25, the ESC ORI 32 is rated for 25 amps continuously and about 35 amps burst. There are cases, I'll say several cases, in which pilots have actually taken this Airbot Omnibus F4 and ORI 32 stack and run it on 6S without any difficulties. Uh, on bigger quads, not necessarily on micro FPV quads, uh, but on bigger, uh, uh, on bigger racing quads, 5-inch quads. This discussion that we're going through right now, however, is only for using these stacks uh, for micro FPV uh, quads, so uh, up to 4S is, should be quite sufficient. We already went over what the MPU 6000 gyro is. They both have that. Betaflight OSD, yes. Solder pads and no pins, yes, they both have that. Uh, the difference being with the Airbot Omnibus F4, uh, the solder pads are much larger than that with the Diatone Mamba F4. And one thing I do want to say about that is with the smaller pads with the Diatone Mamba F4, you're going to have to be careful with the amount of heat you apply to them with your soldering gun, uh, as well as the amount of time you're applying that heat. 
to those pads because if you use excessive heat or if you keep your soldering iron on the pads for some reason too long then those smaller pads aren't going to be able to absorb the heat as well as the larger pads and they may actually come off of the board and if you lose the pads off the board then you're basically toast. Black box they both have the same 16 meg flash uh, black box capability they both have smart audio capability and they both have smart port uh, telemetry capable. Documentation I put one check here for the Dytone Mom F4 and we're going to go over the documentation examples uh, for each of these after this slide. Uh, they're both good. Uh, Airbot Omnibus just has more of it out there uh, and, and in more detail but uh, the documentation for both of these stacks is sufficient in order for you to be able to figure out where to wire things for your build. ESC firmware, uh, the Dytone Mamba F4 uh, has BL Heli S, Airbot Omnibus F4, uh, Ori 32 stack uh, has BL Heli 32, and we went over the differences on that. They both have external buzzer support, they both can support LEDs. The difference in cost is somewhat significant here. The Dytone Mob F4 Mini Power Tower you can get for approximately 40 bucks, whereas the AirBot stack comes in at around 70. Now, which one's best for you and your build? Only you are going to be able to determine that. The AirBot is more robust. It's got bigger solder pads. It's physically larger in size and weight. It may be able to withstand uh, more abuse over time and therefore be more durable or the Dytone Mamba especially with the cost uh, may be sufficient for your build uh, because you can almost get two of these uh, stacks for the price of one of these. One thing I will say about the size and weight of the AirBot Omnibus F4 the physical dimensions of the AirBot are larger than that of the Dytone Mamba F4 specifically in one in one dimension. So what you want to do prior to deciding which of these stacks is right for you is take a look at the space in the frame that you're contemplating using for your build because you don't want to choose a frame and choose the AirBot stack and that without uh, doing some research on the amount of space available in the frame and then find out based on the size of this AirBot Omnibus F4 stack it won't fit in your frame. So do a little bit of research ahead of time, take a look at the space inside the frame that you're contemplating using, and then determine whether or not you even have a choice between the Dytone Mom F4 and the AirBot, uh, because the AirBot may actually not fit nicely in your frame. We're going to take a look at an example of it fitting in nicely in a frame. The most recent build I did with this uh, AirBot Omnibus F4 stack. So, what size amperage-wise ESC do you need? Here's some, ex here's some examples of how many amps, max amps, are pulled with various motors, uh, motor size, KV, uh, power, the battery power, and the props. Uh, even some three and uh, four blade props here. These are just examples. Uh, the Data is derived from the Micromotor Test Lab Facebook site or manufacturer's specifications. And what you're going to find out here is that the motor size, the motor KV, the battery size, the prop size, and the number of blades all impact the max amps drawn from the ESC. But based on these examples for Micro FPV Quad, you can see that the maximum amperage pulled is 24.1 amps here. 23 amps here. Both of these fall well below the 25 amp ESC uh, for both of these stacks, the, both the Dytone and the AirBot. And keep in mind, uh, AirBot uh, stack has been run on 6S uh, 5 inch quads with no difficulties. And AirBot itself is saying that it comes in at about a 35 uh, amp burst current based on my inquiry of them. So, in summary, both of these stacks will be sufficient to run on a micro FPV quad. As I mentioned, here's an example of the AirBot Omnibus F4 Nano V6 and the Ori32 ESC uh, fitting nicely inside my Flex RC Ascent X 2.5 inch version. This is a 2.5 inch quad running 2.5 inch props. Uh, it does have a lot of space. It's uh, actually 
from bottom of the uh, base, uh, from the top of the base plate frame here to the bottom of this side rail is about 27 millimeters and to the top of the side rail is about 29 millimeters. Uh, so if the stack can fit inside the space of these rails then I could actually go up to 29 millimeters and still have it somewhat protect the electronics somewhat protected by the top of the rails which is actually what I did here. I've got a four board stack. I've got uh, the ESC at the bottom, the flight controller on top of that, the Runcam Mini DVR board on top of that. In between that board and this uh, FR Sky XSR uh, receiver, I've got the AKK Oscars Backpack uh, VTX. So I've got one, two, three, four uh, boards, and then on top of that, I slapped on the uh, receiver. So, even in this little two and a half inch build, the AirBot Omnibus uh, stack fit nicely within it. However, I also know that there are some three inch frames out there which uh, you cannot rotate uh, the board in the frame the way I did in order to get the battery pads out the back and the smaller dimensions of the stack side to side. Uh, so in those types of frames, you wouldn't be able to actually rotate this stack and the longer dimension of the stack would be running crosswise across the frame this way and it would stick out further from the sides of the frame which may not be what you want in your particular build. So once again, based on that, take a look at how much space you have in the frame that you're contemplating using before you end up uh, purchasing this stack because you want to make sure that this stack, if that's what the one you want to use, will fit inside the frame. As I mentioned, we'll, we're going to go over the documentation. Here's the documentation on the Diatone Mamba F4 mini power tower uh, that comes with it. <clears throat> and it shows you all the things that are supported uh, for both the flight controller and uh, how the ESC is wired. There was a discrepancy here uh, that I noticed between uh, this little uh, pad for input to the two to four S uh, lipo and over here it's uh, three to four S. I have confirmed that it actually is two S to four S. That's another thing I wanted to mention uh, about the AirBot. Some sites are showing that the AirBot stack is two uh, S to four S and other sites are showing it three uh, S to six S for the uh, flight controller and uh, three to four S or something like that for the uh, ESC. The difference being uh, apparently, and it, it is 2S capable for a short period of time until your battery uh, uh, voltages uh, drop uh, below uh, or at uh, 7 volts because apparently it shuts down as soon as it gets at or uh, immediately below 7 volts. So the AirBot stack is somewhat 2S capable but uh, primarily uh, it's good for 3 and 4S on uh, micros. Documentation for the AirBot Omnibus F4 uh, stack. Uh, this is what comes with it. Uh, here's, it shows the, both the top and the bottom of the uh, flight controller and it does a good job of laying out uh, what's connected uh, to what pads here. It's just a different format than uh, the Diatone stack was using. As I mentioned on my Flex RC build, I did uh, flip the ESC on its roll axis by 180 degrees and on its yaw axis minus 90 degrees and uh, uh, that was to get the motor pads uh, facing up instead of underneath as well as to get the battery pads of the ESC uh, facing out the rear and for the flight controller I had to rotate that uh, minus 90 degrees just to align the 8 pin connectors up with the ESC so that I could use a three centimeter le uh, length of uh, connector as opposed to a longer version and more wires uh, running between the flight controller and the ESC. This is not difficult to do. Uh, you can just do this through uh, your beta flight configuration tab. Uh, here's some more documentation on the ESC. As I mentioned, uh, just went over about uh, rolling and flipping uh, uh, and rotating the board on that. In addition, AirBot provides you with this information in case you wanted to remap some resources 
for instance, uh, for smart port telemetry, you use soft serial. Here's the information uh, that they provide you in order to be able to do that. One other thing on the AirBot uh, stack, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. Philip Seidel, and he's done a detailed wiring connection plan for this AirBot Omnibus F4 Nano V6 and Ori32 combo. That detailed wiring connection plan can be found at this site here, which is his. So as I mentioned to begin with when we were doing the comparison, both the Diatone stack and the AirBot stack have sufficient documentation. Uh, it's just that there's more of it for the AirBot stack uh, out there uh, so that uh, there shouldn't be any ambiguity whatsoever as to how you go about connecting things to what pads. And that's going to conclude our comparison. Well, there you have it. Our comparison of two of the most, if not the most, feature-packed flight controller ESC stack combinations for your upcoming micro FPV drone build. We hope you found it informative and useful. Remember to subscribe and hit the like button. Leave any questions or remarks you may have in the comments section below, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Happy flying.